Metro Rock plays everything. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the cool baby RS99 Super Brick Game 99 and 1. That's right. 99 games. This is, by the way, how this came packaged. Upside down. Hanging like a bat. Got this for a few bucks off of eBay. I have uh, low hopes for it. Uh, so hopefully they'll at least meet them. Uh, note that I believe it does share a lot of DNA with this, the brick phone, uh, which I slightly misreviewed last time. So I'm going to try and make things up to you guys on this one. Get all those games in there. I'm not going to do every variant, though. That's, that's crazy. Nobody would do that. Actually, probably somebody did, but it's not going to be me because that would make for a pretty boring video. As is all this talking. So let's look at the box. Front. It has a Tetris like cover, which it is mostly Tetris games. On the side, we have some Chinese. On the back, it says Undos Wegos. Is it Wegos? Is that right? Wegos? Wogos? Me popular du mundo. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, there's a lot of something. That's what I can decode from this. Nice box, actually. I mean, it's a real box. Um, just kind of a cardboardy thing. That's uh, better than the bag the last one came in. Come on. Take the positives while we can get them. All right, let's pop this thing open. Take a look. Pretty light, but not terribly light. Product specification. Key and operation introduction. On, off. Switch keys to switch on and close the game machine. Reset. It can be used when a machine fails or when the game is re-selected as a boot key. All right. We get it. And there we go, and whatever. All right. Um, feels not too bad. Actually, it has a decent texture about it. It's a little bit, uh, it feels easy to drop for some reason. It's kind of top heavy. Wow, the controls are rubber. These are actually made of a different material from this. That's unusually nice for this kind of thing. So it actually feels, it feels decent. We get the back, model RS99, made in China. Takes two triple A's, which I happen to have right here. I prefer double A's. Well, it started. Yeah, this appears to be identical. Here, let me zoom in a little bit. Yeah, this appears to be identical to the system that I have here. I'm going to hold it on the ground a little bit here, or on this table, so that it doesn't get out of the way. And here we are at the beginning. Hitting A or B, actually, the rotate buttons, will cycle through the games. Notice how they are lettered. After K, <laughs> they're all the same. So, not much difference there. However, uh, there are variants of them you can get by pressing down, you see. And also, if I press right, it will change. Look, wait, right there, right there, look right there. <laughs> I hit the wrong one, fine. It will change the speed or the level by hitting the right and left D-pad. How cool is that? All right, back to game A. Let's take a look at it. Game A, this is kind of a tank battle game. Hit S, that's this button down here. Start and basically, uh, I wanna shoot the other tanks. 
That one faced his back to me. He deserved to die. Oh, you there. Oh, and I died. Yep. Just keep going. <laughs> All right, next. Game B, racing. Hitting that start button again. And there is no brake button. You don't need to worry about that. Hitting B does exactly the same thing as hitting A. Look at that, I'm going though. I'm amazing at this. <laughs> okay, I think you get the idea on this one. Oh wait, look at. A little bit of track variance there. Okay, really, enough of that. Next game, Game C, Simon. All right, here we go. One of the hard things about this game is, <laughs> while it's playing its startup music, it displays your first move, so you have to really keep an eye on it. Else you will lose. And left, left, down. <laughs> See how he smiles? All right, now let's show you what happens if I do it wrong, because I don't want to play this game for an hour. Okay. Oh, look at, he's sad. And he tells you where you should have gone. Not the whole pattern, mind you, but where you should have gone first. And there we go. Next, Game D. Game D. This one's actually a bit of fun. I, I like this a little bit. Um, let's hit start. Basically, you have to shoot the blocks before they make it to the bottom of the screen and land. A little bit like Space Invaders without all the invaders. But it's uh, pretty responsive. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not going to win any design awards or anything, but it's, it's a bit of a kick and it can be a little bit of a challenge if you let it. Oh, there we go, look at that. Here, I'm going to just let them let them land. Oh, terrible. So there's that one. That one's pretty good. Not bad. Decent premise for, you know, what we have here. Game E is a Frogger-like thing. And it's one of the harder games, but one of the more fun games, honestly. Uh, the thing to remember here is that every other line doesn't count. So this is going to skip two lines when I jump up. Basically, I want to hit a clear spot like that. Crap, I screwed it up. And if I end up hitting anything dark, I'm going to die. So ignore the middle line, or lanes, like every other line, and just wait. Oh, it's, it's not easy. Oh. I'll try this again here. You can usually get it. It's a little bit harder to play through the screen. There we go. Going to get it this time. There we go. I got him across my dot. Ay, ay, ay. Nope, too slow. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. Took me a few minutes to get what was supposed to be going on there. On to F.
Here we have game F, which is a little bit like the Simon game from earlier, but you have to press the buttons quickly, else you will fail. So it doesn't have a pattern here. You're just basically, it tells you to go right, go right. It's a quick time game. There we go. It's quick time without the animation. And uh, just like the other game, it like starts right away, so you got to get right on it. And uh, as you can see, uh, my quick time event mastery is beyond question. Beyond question. This is great, isn't it? <laughs> Two hours of this. All right, no, we're going on to the next one. G, next. Game G. Game G's not too bad. Uh, it's kind of in the Tetris vein where you're trying to get lines, but, well, catch this. It's it's really kind of cool. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, I'm playing this on my camera, so it's getting kind of hard, but uh, I'm going to lose. Shoot. One minute. All right, so I'm trying to get... There we go. Lines across. And I'm using my A button to basically build the line. See? You see? Before it gets to the bottom. Oh, there we go. Ah. Oh. So basically, A draw, draws or paints a line. And I want to do that before it hits the bottom here. See? Oh man, I forgot that one. Hard game to play in a camera, but really, eh, not bad. It's the first time I've seen this variant too, which um, is probably because that uh, last handheld, I totally missed that it had extra games on it. Yeah, not bad. Meet Game H. This one's another pretty decent one. Okay, so I'm going to press left and then up and then right and then press A or B to launch it. Alright, so basically what I'm doing is I'm pressing up, left, or right to build these so that they look like the ones that are coming down at me. Uh, so obviously the left one does the left one, uh, the upper does the middle one, and the right does the right one. And then you hit A. And uh, yeah, just keep matching them. Took me a little bit to get this one too. I, it's a little bit weird, but once you get the hang of it, actually kind of fun. Not a bad little game if you get bored. Like really bored. Ooh, there we go. Be a good pattern matching game for kids. Or us adults who are going senile. Yeah, not too bad. All right, next, I believe we have a Tetris type of game. I, the beginning of Tetris. Just so you know, anything past here is Tetris, so I'm not going to really bother with them. Uh, we'll just show you it playing Tetris, which it plays as well as any Tetris gaming device does. And let's hit... S for start. And Ah, uh, yes. Indeed. The blocks do fall. And when they are made to lay in lines, they will dissolve. And, uh, yeah. That's it. Tetris. I think we can wrap this thing up now. All right, so I paid between 3 and $4.00 for the brick phone here. By the way, there's a review of this, uh, probably linked up in here. 
and I paid about five or six dollars for this one. If you were to choose a brick game, I would definitely choose this one over this one. It's generally better built. It's got a bigger screen. Uh, I think the controllers are pretty good. And it makes a little bit more sense, although there are some crazy things uh, going on with it, like there are all of these. Um, it's got, they, they both have the same game, so that doesn't matter. So it's all down to construction. Uh, I would have liked it if they would build one of these with a backlight. That would be really uh, kind of nice. You could play them in the dark. You know, kind of bridge uh, that gap between these and the Famiclones. And that's kind of where the problem is. The Famiclones are about 12 bucks. They're about 6 bucks more than these. Uh, feature a lot more variety in gameplay. And are generally nicer to look at. I mean, this one's not bad. Uh, but they're, they're just generally better systems. And it's kind of hard to recommend these over that kind of thing. But, if you want to relive the glory of yesteryear, I would guess that this is the way to go. So, um, thumb sideways, but thumbs up for its genre. Wait. As far as it relates to its genre, thumbs up. But a thumb sideways, you know, as far as actually being something you'd want to play. Alright, <laughs> that is it. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in a couple days. Bye. Retro Rocks Gaming Videos